All right, we're done with ABS printing for a while, so let's switch to PLA. So we have to unload the filament. So we select filament, unload. It's going to heat up the extruder. And we'll come back when that's done. I'll show you how to do it. Before we unload, we're going to move the uh, print head to over the uh, bed so it doesn't drip everywhere. Should have done that first, but anyway. All right, so you want to push it through a little bit. Push this lever down, push it through a little bit to get it going, and then quickly pull it up. That's it. That's how you unload it. All right, now we're going to take this spool off. So let's move the print bed out of the way. Oops. <laughs> You twist this thing 90 degrees and then it should come out. Just spool that out. Pull it back through the... Something about this, well I'll explain that later when I do the loading, but... I did... Originally this straw came with the end of it down here, way down here, but then it just kept... The top of the uh, filament kept catching on the head, so I moved this up to its almost maximum position. So it works a lot better this way. All right, that's it for that. I'll come back when we load the new filament. All right, so we saw how to unload filament. I'm going to load some new filament. I'm actually going to reload the PLA filament that came with it because I'm going to do some prototyping of some things. So first we're going to move the print head so it's over the it's over the print bed. We'll move the print bed up a little bit. Actually, well, we'll leave it down here for now. Okay, then we're going to load the filament in. I'll show you how to do that. All right, so we're going to load the filament in the stand. You'll notice that we installed a new filament stand over here. Uh, that's to handle the bigger one kilogram reels. I'll go over that in the next video. But we're going to use the PLA that came with the printer. It's, uh, I did some of the first testing with this. I'm going to use this uh, reel insert for the axle. And then we're going to use, we're going to use the new 100 millimeter printed uh, filament uh, holder rod. We'll put in, the, there's three positions over here. Since this is a small wheel, we're going to put it in the bottom position. That'll keep it out of the way. This goes in and twists and it turns freely, that's all we want. So it's down this little well down here. That'll help keep it from wiggling around too much. All right, now we just need to find the end of it and we'll stick it through the straw and hook it up. All right, to feed in the filament, we want to cut off the end of this so it's nice and clean. We'll cut it at an angle, make it easier to uh, poke through. I'm gonna make sure it's not caught underneath some other uh, strands down here on the reel or else it'll have too much friction. So we feed it up to the bottom of this straw. Like I said earlier, I moved this straw so that the opening was way up here because otherwise the filament kept catching on the on the print head. And I'll, actually on the back of the uh, on the back of the uh, print bed too. It's catching on this. So this when the print bed comes up it hits right here and that means that the filament isn't impacted by the print bed. So. In the back of the print bed, there's this wall, so we want to make sure the filament doesn't hit that. Now, this is, here's an interesting thing. With the printer came these little short tubes, and there was nothing in the instructions on what they were for. I'm pretty sure, based on what another uh, video I watched said, was you, you want to use these when it goes into the print head to prevent erosion uh, around the print head, because this filament, if it keeps rubbing up against this, it'll cause this little hole here to get bigger. So this doesn't actually fit down in there, but I think it'll help keep the uh, keep the filament more upright and uh, 
prevent erosion here. So we're going to use this, and I don't see any reason why not to. That's something I can think of why these little short straws came, came with the printer. They don't seem to be, I can't think of any other use for them anywhere else. So we're going to try that. Hopefully that'll work. So now we want to go back to the filament menu like you saw before. This time we're going to pick load. And it's going to heat up. Uh, meanwhile, it's heating up. Actually, we're going to cancel that. Because we want to move the print head up some more. Oh, the, the, uh, we want to move the print bed up some more. So it's not going too far down. We're going to get this filament out of the way in a second. Here, so it's higher. That's pretty good. This is feeding properly. There. Tighten it up a little bit. Alright, then we'll go back to uh, loading the filament. And it's going to heat up, and then we'll come back and we'll get it finished. Alright, so the extruder is up to its uh, temperature, which is uh, 230. And we're just going to push, push down the button there and push some filament through until it comes through. It's pushing out the rest of the uh, ABS filament, which is fine. It's drawing it in now, so we'll just let it draw it in on its own. So now it's coming out white. We'll let it go out for just another minute or two, second or two until we're sure it's completely white. That looks pretty good. There's a little mo gear motor in there that pulls the uh, pulls the filament through while you're, you're doing it. And this little straw on the top seems to be fine. I think it's just going to help keep the uh, filament more uh, vertical going into the printer. So that'll stop that. So I think we're done. So we're just going to say done. And we're ready to print with our... Uh, P original peat white PLA filament. All right, so when you ever use a new filament, now I've used this before, but I'm going to go through this anyway. When you use a new filament, you want to see what the best temperature is to print it. Uh, the bed temperature, we already did some tests for that for this white PLA, so I won't go through that again this time. But when I get, a new, I'm going to be using a new filament soon, and I'll go over the bed uh, adhesion temperature tests. But uh, this is a temperature tower I found on Think, Think Thingiverse. And what I liked about it is it had the bridges, had the different temperatures, it had, but it had this pointy thing on the side, which can show how well the printer can do these little uh, pointy things, and whether there's any stringing and so forth, you can look for that. The other thing about it I liked was it was based on a SCAD project, and you could customize the starting temperature, the ending temperature, how many degrees per per uh, bridge, and I added a new uh, uh, thing to this program where right? it would print the, I could put in a three letter code for the for the uh, material. So we're using PLA, so I put PLA in here. I won't go through all this code, but uh, basically it has a module called a, ta called a tower that builds this one layer of this tower. And uh, then it starts here and then it goes through a loop on, on figures out the count, which is uh, the starting temperature minus the, end, minus the ending temperature divided by the step that tells you how many tower how many towers there are how many bridges just loops through and uh, sends calls this subroutine uh, actually yeah it's, uh, to call this subroutine to build the different towers so it builds a tower on the right tower on the left builds the pointy thingy it builds the bridge so. so you always want to start at the highest temperature at the bottom, which was included to me when I first started 3D printing. But uh, at lower temperatures, the printhead can get clogged. So you don't want to start out with a clogged printhead. So you want to start with the highest temperature on the bottom. That seemed counterintuitive to me, but it makes sense. All right, so what we do now is with SCAD, we render it. Open SCAD. This is a free program. I'll have links in the description for this. So it's rendering all the polygons needed to uh, create this tower.
takes a little bit of time. My uh, laptop here is not the fastest computer in the world. All right, and it's done. So now we'll export STL, which is what we need for uh, Simplify 3D. And this is Pointy Tower PLA. Go ahead and save that. And then we'll go over to Simplify 3D and then we'll print this out. All right, we're in Simplify 3D. And we've got our, we imported our Pointy Temperature Tower STL file. We just imported it by selecting it. Selecting it from here. This is the one we wanted. So. Uh, then we need to add a process. So the process we need, we need to change the temperature based on the layer of the print. So let's go ahead and uh, get the process settings. And we, I set up a profile earlier for the temperature tower for PLA, so we'll use that. We'll check the layers, the infill. Infill is only 20% on this print. We don't really care about strength. Uh, but for the temperature, we, have, we need a much more complicated uh, uh, set point for each layer. So this is already filled out, but I'll go through and figure out, show you how I figured out what layers to put where. So, so the build temperature for the platform, 70 degrees is what we found out earlier. For this white PLA, we need to get the build, uh, the, the printing bed to be 70. And the extruder needs to change temperature based on the layer of the model. So let's go back and figure, see how we, how we uh, figured that out. The way to do it is you go to prepare to print. And this is the print simulation. It's already at 367 layers. So we can go down and see where the first layer is, is done. So here, what I decided was I wanted it to keep the same temperature until it finished the pointy thing. So right there, it's on layer 50. It just finished, it's layer 51, it's already on the next, uh, it's finished the pointy thing on this side. So even though it started part of the next uh, tower, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm watching the, in the bridge and the pointy thingy. So I wanna make sure those are all printed at the same temperature as this bridge is this center. So layer 50, Layer 50 is the last uh, layer that's printed with this 220 temperature. So let's go back and look at our process settings for temperature. And um, we actually changed it on 53. So I guess I needed to go over to 53 to get to 210. So then every 25 layers, I go to the next uh, temperature because there's 25 layers between these uh, pointy things. So that's the strategy. So that, that's one of the big advantages of uh, Simplify 3D that I found was if you don't do this, if you don't use this kind of program that can let you uh, just enter the set points for different layers, then you have to go in and edit the G code, and there's various ways you can do that. I had some, you know. Has some problems with that, and this just makes it much, much simpler. So this is what I recommend. All right, so now to print, we're going to connect to the printer. And we have to use our trick, list devices. And quickly click on connect, so we can connect to the printer. The printer's already turned on. All right, we're connected, so we minimize this, prepare to print, and we send the printer, we send the file over to the printer.
All right, so the phone's being downloaded, and we'll watch it go over there. It's going to start heating up. All right, so for PLA, you print with the door open, doors open, and the top off. Because you don't really need to control the temperature inside the printer like you do with ABS. It doesn't have the same shrinkage problems, I guess. So we'll just uh, switch over to the time lapse and watch this uh, temperature tower print. So our temperature tower for the white PLA is complete. Let's pop it off in there and take a better look at it. Let's see. Um, I see a 215. You see some strings coming down, so that's probably too hot. And if you look on the right, see some strings at 215 with a pointy thing and also at 205. Now at 195 the pointy thing gets kind of uh, squirrely. Two hundred and two hundred five look very similar. Two hundred actually looks better, so I think two hundred is our temperature. That's what we were using. There's a few little strings on 200 on the pointy thing, but there's also some on the 205. So if you just look at the bridge, 205, the bridge is sagging. And um, so 200 is better than 205. And then 195, the pointy thing is kind of not as crisp as the 200. So we're going to stick with 200. So we have a bed temperature of 70 and printing temperature of a uh, shooter temperature of 200. So that's what we're gonna use for the white PLA.